Yes, indeed, you are listening to the Rock Casserole right here on Digital Revolution Radio. And this is Artist in the Spotlight. And today, uh, today we have uh, a gentleman. Uh, from, he's from uh, New York. He's, uh, he's in Long Island, New York. Uh, the band is called, that was uh, Night Break. And uh, they're, they're, a real, they're an awesome band, man. Uh, actually, our, our uh, um, Sue, uh, uh, Sue uh, turned us on to them. And she ain't even. She said she said that she was gonna be here today. She'd probably sleep, and I know she she was moving and stuff. So, but uh, know, she'll she'll be able to catch it on Tuesday too if you don't hear it. So, anyways, uh, Todd, uh, this is Mr. Todd uh, Verney. Uh, you're on the air, Todd. Say hi to everybody. All right, what's up, Castro? Glad to be on. How's everyone doing today? Awesome. So, um, uh, the name of the band is Nightbreak. Uh, why don't you give us a, 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 a little background? I mean, how did you guys get started and stuff, Todd? Uh, how, how, well, first, how, how, I mean, how long have you been around? Um, well, I've been around uh, since 1976, personally. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I started playing guitar, actually, really young. In uh, 1984, I think I was like eight years old. And, uh, you know, I grew up with all the old school bands in the, in the old classic era, so to speak. And uh, I actually started this band under a different name in the early 90s and went on hiatus for a while, started it back up in the mid-2000s. And um, we uh, recorded our first record actually in 2007, but never really truly released it digitally and everything until a few years ago. And, um, you know, like, we just, we don't really care about the whole what's hip, what's What's not? We didn't. We never got into the whole new metal thing or the grunge thing. It just kind of bypassed us. And uh, my style is going to sound old school, as you can probably hear from the song I just played. And uh, going to continue that way. And that's what's gotten us a lot of listeners. To be honest with you, because I think a lot of people these days are wanting to go back to that old sound and like that old sound. Well, it's definitely my favorite sound. I mean, I I, I grew up. I, I was born. Uh, I'm, I'm a little older, but I, I I grew up in the in the late '70s and, and '80s and stuff, and so I mean I've I've always been a fan of uh, uh, you know the old school hard rock. I mean I I love the you know the the sound you guys have. It's uh you know just that straightforward you know hard drive and just like that song that we just listened to. Uh, that's a uh, uh, night break. That's the name of the song. I uh, wanted to uh, uh, tell us. Is that, I mean, did you write the song that song before you named the band, or, or I mean how how did that come about? No, actually. The name actually was first, and then we had the whole first record written, and I was thinking to myself, this record is just missing one thing. It's missing the anthem. So I never really go out of my way to try to write a song. It just never really works for me. But that particular song, I was like, I'm going to force myself to write the song called Night Break. And there you have it. <laughs> so it was an intentional thing to name it Night Break. Um, how did you come up? Um, how did you come up with the name Nightbreak? Why? Why did you choose that name? What, is there any particular reason? Oh yeah, because uh, I am up all night and I sleep all day. Opposite of daybreak, nightbreak. <laughs> all right, that makes sense. Real simple. <laughs> uh, so who who all who 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 all is in the band? Well, from its incarnation, it's always been like close friends in the neighborhood. And uh, our first record still has pretty much the same members, and um, we're pretty much family-based. I'll have my bro- my brothers play uh, either on bass and guitar, and sometimes we'll actually switch it up live if one of us can't make it. <laughs> we'll have another one of our family relatives fill in, and um, it's kind of always been like that. My brothers on uh, bass, guitar. My brother. Darren, who plays in another on Relapse Records right now with Unarmed Free Trance, he plays drums on the first record, and um, you know, it's it's kind of like a circle. If uh, if I need to call on anybody, they'll be there, and if not, um, we'll have our sturdy lineup right now of uh, my brother on guitar, Scott, and uh, we got Mikey V, my nephew on bass, and we got Dylan Hutchins on drums, but. That could that could always change, and uh, it's never any like hard feelings or anything like that with this band. Because uh, I mean, I still I still write songs with people from the earliest 1991 incarnation of the band. Still, so we we'll have to keep it close knitted like that. 
So it's kind of family oriented then. That's 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 cool, man. That's real cool. Yeah. Oh, cool. So that's because I mean I was looking at the picture. I got I, I was looking at some pictures of you guys. So that's your that's your brother who plays the drums, and then uh, the guy on uh, bass. Those are your brothers. Um, not on the picture of the latest or the current record. That's uh, Dylan on drums. That's uh, my nephew's friend who oh, okay. uh, joined the band uh, two years ago, and um, but my brother plays drums on the first Nightbreak record from uh, a few years back. Uh, that's my brother on guitar there, you see, and my nephew on bass, you're probably looking at on the picture. Yeah. Um, but uh, we've had our different, uh, we've had different members throughout, but pretty much all circling family base. That's cool. Um, now, you, have, you, guys, you guys just released a new album, uh, and also, uh, I, I know you, you were signed to a label now. You want to tell us a little bit about that, yeah. Ryan, uh, Ryan Records? Yeah, I mean, uh, our first record was doing good digitally, and um, then I uh, finally started writing the second record a few years later, and um, we started getting a lot of downloads on our, our song Dangerous and the title track, Wicked Angel, and as of just about three or four months ago, after sweating it out, sending press kits pretty much everywhere, anywhere possible, we started getting actually hit up by a few major labels, but... Um, I had to turn those down because they were just, they were asking, basically you have to invest in labels these days and you know, everyone knows it's not really mainstream so there's no major money market anymore so you want to be in a main, you want to be on a major label, you're going to have to invest in them and they were asking way too much money. So uh, I'm just not about that. I don't really, I, I'm, I'm not going to sit there and go, Here's fifteen thousand dollars now. What are you going to give me in return? Like, hey, I ain't playing that game. So, um, Ryan Records actually got back to us. It's one of the labels that got back to us, and uh, their contract looked real good. We liked everything they were saying, everything they pitched to us. They're uh, they're going to be releasing our current record um, digitally and physical around the world. It'll be in stores around the world, and uh, we uh. We're just pretty happy with, happy to be with them right now, and uh, they we just remastered the record, so it should be out, uh, I believe, next month. And we're just looking forward to continuing with them with the next record as well. Awesome. So you're you're saying that there were uh, labels contacting you; they wanted you to pay them. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people don't go around, you know, saying I'm not going to go under the bus. I'm not going to name them, but uh, a few major yeah. labels with like you know the classic '80s bands on it. They got back to us and we're saying, "Hey, this is this is the standard these days. You know, you gotta you gotta invest in us, and uh, then you see what happens after that. You can't, you're not guaranteed anything, really. I mean, you just you're you're gonna put your record out. They're gonna do what they do, and uh, but they're not investing in anybody. They just don't do it anymore because." FM radio doesn't play new rock. There's no MTV anymore. So it's like you're taking a big chance. So, you know, if if the label is going to be interested in you, that's great. I mean, that's hard enough to, to get to that level. But, you know, if, if you're, you're the type of band that really wants to go all out and uh, throw down 15 grand for a label, you know, be my guess. It's just oh, wasn't man. my cup of tea. <laughs> that's crazy. I I well yeah. I, I could tell you from my own experience I actually did something similar to that a few years back. Um, it was a label and they I'm not going to name them or anything, but they contacted me and um, uh, and I did give them some money and uh, the record I had out was selling really well and uh, I one day I just didn't hear from them anymore. <laughs> they were they were gone. The the uh, the website was gone. Everything. So I mean, yeah, yeah, stuff like that. I mean, if you're a musician, and I mean, you know, and you and, and you as well, yeah, be careful that kind of stuff, man. Because I mean, people. I mean, there's there's yeah, there there's so many so many scammers out there out to, you know, take advantage of people, you know, uh, independent artists and stuff like that. And and that's you know that's that that's why I'm so so you know uh, up on. Uh, um, promoting the indie artists and stuff like that, you know, we do it for free. <laughs> I mean, I, I, if it's good, we play it on the show. Yeah, so you know, just be careful with stuff like that. I mean, yeah, don't ever. But I'm, I'm glad to hear that they had, that you got signed with a with a with a with a legitimate label. That's that that's cool, awesome. Yeah, um, I, w I was only I know that they weren't uh, scamsters because I mean they're just they're notorious labels that everyone knows. So I knew it wasn't about that. 
but you know, at the same time, uh, I don't care. I don't care who they are. It's it's if if unless you tell me I'm going to be on on a headbangers ball in 1985, I ain't giving nobody <laughs> no money. You know what I mean? Yep, I can. Uh, I, I understand. Yeah, but um, yeah, but um, that's pretty much stuff that they robbed you like that. I don't even know what to say about that. That's like, yep. uh, I hope you uh, got some revenge. <laughs> No, uh, well, I I just couldn't. It was a while we ago. Got revenge, uh, but we got revenge from the fact that we uh, do a show that promotes indie artists, and that it's not really, really so much revenge, but justice. Yeah, yeah. If not for us, for others. Yeah, I just you know. Anyways, uh, let's get getting back to your album. Uh, 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 this is called a Wicked Angel. Is that right? Yeah, the name of the record is Wicked Angel. We have the title track, Wicked Angel. We actually have um, a guest guitarist on that song playing lead guitar. Um, I don't know if you remember from the MTV days, uh, Bangalore Choir. They used to be on Headbangers Ball quite a lot in the early 90s. Um, the guitarist, John Kirk, uh, guest starred on that track. Oh, awesome. That's awesome. Um, I have a, a song here uh, queued up I was going to play. Um, this is, I, I believe, this is from the album. It's called. You were you were just talking about it a couple, uh, a couple, a couple of minutes ago. It's a song called "Dangerous." Um, yeah. Yeah. I would. How, what do you? How do you feel about playing that one? Uh, what do you? Do you have anything you want to say about that song? Oh, uh, that was the first single uh, we released from it. We have a video for it. Um, we uh, we shot the video with uh, the the producer of the Maury Pope show. Actually, did that video for us. Awesome. And she she actually did it for free for us. And uh, we're forever grateful for for that. It came out great, and um, that song has just been. Uh, it's I guess that one has uh, our most downloads so far. I'm just hoping for more as the record releases in uh, Europe and whatever. Awesome. Yeah, I I seen the video. It's a cool video. If you haven't, if you if you guys haven't uh, seen the video for for uh, Dangerous, uh, go to uh, it's it's on your it's on uh, on Nightbreak's Facebook page, and uh, it's it's really cool. So make sure you guys check that out. Uh, let's uh, let's let's spin that song right now, Todd. All right. Go for it, man. All right, Check man. All right, brother. Hang on, just hang tight. I'll be right back with you. All right, you're listening right. to the Rock Casserole. And this is Artist in the Spotlight. On oh man, I can't talk again. Artist in the Spotlight. Uh, you listen to Digital Revolution Radio. We're talking with Todd Verney of uh, Nightbreak, and this is off their off of their uh, their latest album, Wicked Angel. This is Dangerous on Digital Revolution Radio.
Yes, indeed, you are listening to The Rock Casserole right here on Digital Revolution Radio. And this is Artist in the Spotlight, and today we're talking with uh, Todd Verney. Uh, is that, that, that's how you say your last name, is that right, Todd Verney? That is correct. Because yeah, I'm, I'm an idiot, man. I can't, I can't read and stuff. And I, I can't miss, <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm, yeah, I, well. I, I, I have a problem sometimes pronouncing people's names. Uh, Liz, M- M- Mother Metal, she'll just hit me upside my head here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was a cool tune. Um, uh, so where where did you uh, where did you record the album at? Where, where was it recorded? Do you record it in a studio, or do you do you have your own uh, r- uh, recording stuff like like a lot of the artists that we have on here do? Uh, no, I'm not one of those. Um, I'm I'm very very slow with technology i can never ever do it myself believe me i would love to try i just don't have the patience for that and uh i i just i, I just wouldn't even attempt it because it would come out like garbage so ever since our first record we've worked with the same producer that's dan malloy and he's uh he's done records for um cradle of filth he's done records for members of anthrax testament their solo records so i knew we were in good hands when we uh we started with him, and um, ten years later, we, we we're still doing our. We're going to be doing our next record with him as well, and um, we record in Long Island, in, in Long Island, New York, in uh, Suffolk Studios. It's Excellent. a great setup, very professional. I could, uh, you know, I'll, I'll help produce it with him, but um, you know, we're in good hands there. That's that's why if you hear our records, they're they're very top notch quality. So, um, how often do you guys play out uh, uh, gigs and stuff? Do you guys uh, do you, do you just play locally around New York, or do you have any plans of maybe you know venturing out and, and doing some touring or anything like that? Um, we did some touring last year, and um, we're we're kind of trying to stay away from the New York scene right now because it's very much it's really saturated in cover bands, tribute bands, yeah, and it's just it's just really it's not really a good place for. Um, modern metal or rock and it's so we're just right now we're just really trying to take care of all the business business with the record label and the contracts and getting the record out and once the smoke clears a little bit um i want to try to get back out there like in early spring maybe late winter early spring but awesome. i don't i'm not really not even sure if it's going to be new york awesome <clears throat> um we have another song here uh this is actually the title track from from the album wicked angel uh, uh, you want? Is there anything you want to say about that song? What, what's what's uh, what's that song about? Um, that song's about a very very dirty girl. It's too, <laughs> probably too dirty to even talk about on here. And uh, like I said, um, we, like I said, we had John Kirk from uh, the old the old Daniel Choir from the early nineties. They were uh, um, they had some videos of Daniel's ball, and uh, he was nice enough to play our uh, lead guitar on that. And um, I just wanted to thank actually Alpha. 
awesome album review. That was really cool of him because uh, you cringe sometimes when you get record reviews. Like, what the hell are they going to say? <laughs> but uh, that, was real, that was a really cool review, so I want to thank Al for that. And um, once again, we're, it's uh, I see the chat room here. It's it's Rind Records. Um, the vice president of our label, he uh, is Joe Barnes. He um, he's better known for he used to be on EMP. That's Dave Ellison's label, Megadeth. Now he's with Rind. And uh, we're just looking forward to moving forward, man. I have the whole next album written, and it's ready to go, too. Do you have a title for the next album? Yeah, it's actually called King of the Rumble. Awesome. And I got that, and I got that name basically from the modern day of the internet being saturated with a million bands. And basically, <laughs> what it comes down to is now, only the strong survives out there. After you got that right. <laughs> um, when uh, um, I mean, what 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 uh, what can we expect on the new album? Um, uh, more of the same as uh, I mean, or just the same you know hard driving sound like you have on on uh, Wicked Angel. There ain't gonna be no surprises with the style. It's gonna be if you like our first two records, you'll love this one. Um, it's gonna be a little shorter. I want to make it an EP because it just I feel like that just makes more sense these days because people's attention spans these days are just so short fused yep. that I feel like if I just give a good solid five or six songs of my best stuff, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be more beneficial. Awesome. All right, man, let's, uh, let's, let's check this song out. That's a wicked angel. This is the title track from the album. All right. Yeah, man. All right. <laughs> hang, hang, just hang tight there, Todd. All right, everybody. You're listening to the Rock Casserole, and this is Artist in the Spotlight. We're talking with Todd Verney uh, from Nightbreak. And this is the title track from their new album that will be available next month. Uh, it's called Wicked Angel on Digital Revolution Radio.
yes, you are listening to the Rock Casserole right here on Digital Revolution Radio with me. Yeah, where we're doing all the bands. <laughs> I'm Jeff DeBerry. This is Artist in the Spotlight, and today we're talking with uh, guitarist, uh, singer, and songwriter uh, Todd Verney uh, from Nightbreak. So you are you are the primary songwriter then in the band, or do any or do you ever uh, write any songs together as a band, or do you just write all the songs yourself and then like present them to the band? How how do you do that? I would say I probably write eighty eighty five percent of it all myself. Uh, once in a while, if someone has an idea, they'll throw it to me and uh, we'll collaborate. But most of the time, it's it's just me, myself, and I and. Uh, I kind of, not to be like, I don't really care. If, you, if someone has a good song, I'm using it, you know, it's like that. It just, it just comes out, it just comes out that way that I wound up writing everything. And, um, in the studio, we'll work on it together and whoever has ideas while we work on it, we just collaborate from there. Who are, who are some of your influences, Todd? Like who, I mean, who, who, who influences you? Um, you know, as a kid, my favorites were always, G and R and Skid Row and uh, I liked Warren a lot. I, I liked, love Warren. Um, yeah. And as I got older, I started getting into more of the metal and uh, and I played in metal bands and I have some metal records that I actually released and they're on my YouTube page that are probably a lot heavier than Nightbreak. But my soul and my my true heart of music writing is always been more of the hard rock edge with a slight metal to it so that's why i went forward more with nightbreak but i just like everything i like the whole genre I, the only thing i really don't like is i mean i like everything from the journey journey in the cars to pantera and cannibal corpse i like everything awesome. but the only, thing I, the only thing i really just doesn't i just never could get into is that alternative metal the new metal i just it's just not for me yeah yeah i i i, I i'm not into that stuff either I, i'm just i'm old school um, we you know ever since we started doing the show, though. I mean, I've I mean personally been introduced to so many, so much music that I didn't even know existed. I mean, there is so many awesome, you know, independent artists. I mean, God, I mean the independent artists. I mean, they're just they're coming out of the woodwork, you know. And I just I I, I just think it's awesome. I mean, what do, what do you what, what I mean? How do you feel about the independent scene today? Um, I I really. I, I couldn't even believe that there were so many good bands out there until I started listening to stations like yours and a few others, because that's where, how else do you hear new bands these yep. days? That's why, that's why you give credit to those stations like yours. Because, I mean, I discovered bands that are like, well, independent and signed, but I discovered bands that are like, I don't know if you heard of Heat. They're awesome. They're from Sweden. They're very hard rock. They're, they're like kind of our style. They're like kind of like a modern day foreigner style, if you like them. Um, Striker, I love. Oh, They're I love amazing. Striker. Yeah. Now we um, we opened yeah, the show um, with one of their songs. Yeah. Oh, uh, did you? Yeah, well, yeah, the second song we play off of the City of Gold album, uh, which one? I, uh, I can't remember the name right offhand. But yeah, yeah, we I, I have like four of their albums. Yeah, they're awesome. I'm more of yeah, extreme I mean, metal. Yeah, Mother Metal, she's into the... But you like everything Mother Metal. Yeah, you, you love all uh, kinds but, of music. But, but later today, I'm playing what's called Technical Death Metal, which is jaw-dropping technique. Uh, these guys are like, almost like the jazz musicians of the 30s, you know, in the 40s, uh, wow. in terms of, you know, improvisational skills. But it's, but it's metal. Yeah, polyrhythms. See, cause they Real use, progressive stuff. Yeah, they use like progressive and uh, jazz... In a death metal format, you'll hear a lot of arpeggios, you'll hear a lot of polyrhythms, you'll hear a lot of odd time signatures, uh, multiple time signature changes, really difficult stuff. Yeah, that's, right. that's yeah I, metal. I really hate when people say, I hate when people say, like, oh, death metal is just noise. It's like, no. um, have you heard it? Have you listened to it? Exactly. It's actually extremely technical, way more technical than tons and tons of the most famous bands out there. It's really just... It, it, death, death metal is a, is a true art. It's a, I, I love death metal. I mean, I love suffocation. I love all the old school uh, death metal bands. A lot of them nowadays, I can't really get into because they're kind of just 
some of the copying a lot of the original bands. So uh, as far as death metal goes, I I do hear some of the new ones are good, but I love the um that that mid nineties uh, death metal. Well, try so, out the technical death metal. This is a whole different genre. This is a more of a genre for like the elite musicians, the top right. of the line. I've heard it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, if you if you if you if you're around later, uh, Mother Metal should be playing some of that on her uh, uh, on her segment today. That uh, that'll be coming up at about three oh, forty five this afternoon. <laughs> anyway, Todd, I want to thank you, Todd, uh, for coming on the show today. It's been a pleasure talking well, to you. Uh, again, let everybody. Uh, do you have a website or anything where people can? Uh, and uh, you're you're also you're on Facebook too. Do you have a, you, do you guys have a website also? There's no actual direct website as of right now. We might make one this year after uh, the smoke clears with the label. But right now we are just we got our YouTube channel, which is Wicked Angel. Um, sorry, Wicked Angel Entertainment and Promotions, and we have our Facebook page and We Rip Nation, and I don't know, there's some other ones out there. I can't remember right now, but our main page is our Facebook band page. Awesome, awesome. So uh, um, when the next album comes out, make sure that you get us a copy of it, and we'll have you back on the show. And who knows, maybe maybe we'll spin the play the whole album. But uh, we're definitely going to have you have Nightbreak, uh, and and one of on an, one of our upcoming shows, we'll we'll we're, we're gonna we'll have you as a featured artist, uh, where we'll like feature your your music throughout the whole day. Does that sound cool to you? That would be absolutely fantastic, man. I, I really appreciate all the time you put into everything, put the time into the flyers, and just you guys are a great station, man. I, I can't say anything. I can't even. I can't even tell you how uh, how uh, great you guys are compared to a lot of stations out there. That the format is just really. It's they're basically playing anything, and it's not appealing. So you guys are really going out there with the cream of the crop, and that's pretty much. That's where you find the newer bands, stations like yours. Oh, thank you so much, Todd. Um, again, uh, thanks for coming on the show. We're going to take it out with the. Uh, you said now this this song, Mastic Girl, and this is off your first album. Yeah, that was actually the first song we ever recorded in uh -huh. a professional studio before. The first okay. song, and um, um, I, it's one of my favorites off the record. I, a lot of people like it. A lot of a lot of females like it. I told a lot of girls it's about them so you know there's probably about 15 <laughs> girls right now there's 15 girls out there in my uh, old town of Mastic that think it's about them and uh, <laughs> so. alright we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna take it out with that one uh, thanks again Todd for coming on the show uh, and I will I'll, I'll get you a copy of the uh, the interview and stuff and you can post it around do whatever you want with it I'll get that to you during the week and, and and also will it'll it'll be on again this Tuesday too. Uh, uh, the show is on at two o'clock. Uh, the same show, the uh, encore of uh, today's show. So you'll be on again. Helping. Yeah, the second helping uh, be will be this Tuesday. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate All right. it. All right, just just hang tight. All right, everybody. We've been we've been uh, talking with uh, Todd Verney from uh, um, Nightbreak, 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 Nightbreak from New York, uh, from Long Island. And this is off of his uh, off, off the first album. This is a song called Master Girl. And when we come back, we got some uh, new stuff to lay on you guys. Uh, a couple new uh, uh, new indie bands. And coming up uh, at the top of the hour, we're gonna have Mr. Zach Attack Gillespie is gonna come on, and he's gonna play some really, really, really cool stuff. So you guys just keep it tuned to the Rock Casserole Digital Revolution Radio with Jeff the Berry Mother Metal on a Sunday. This is Nightbreak and Master Girl. <laughs> 